Let's do this. Your weapon will definitely The Ram Dow. The Ram Dow is a sacrificial sword that descends from the weapons of India's legendary Rajput warriors. Its broad, heavy blade flares to an axe like projection, which is ideally suited to the ritual beheading of large animals such as buffalo and goats. These sacrifices were made to the Hindu goddess of death, Kali, whose symbolic eye is often etched on the flared end of the blade so she can watch over the ceremony. The Eye of Kali can be seen on the Ram Dao wielded by Zod in the comic series Berserk. Good luck, Bladesmiths. We'll see you in four days. My name is Josh Navarrete. I was born in Mexico, and we came to the United States when I was a kid. This is going to be a huge challenge. There's going to be tears, sweat, and probably blood, but I want to go. So far, we got the basic profile done. Everything ready for quenching. Hopefully it worked. Yeah. I've never done finial. This was definitely very challenging. I went with a diamond looking piece, but no matter how beautiful the blade is, if you miss one of the parameters, you're out of the competition. My name is Ben Spangler. When I was 15, I was hanging out at my parents' farm and I found a bucket of blacksmithing tools. I figured, let's give it a shot. And I liked it so much, I kept doing it ever since. So what I'm gonna try and do first is drawing out the tang. I'm gonna do a through tang. Oh, here it goes. Boom! This is my homemade belt grinder. And this is how I have to start this thing. I'm just getting to work on the finial. After some light sanding, it's gonna be done. So, I'm ready to go cut something. Whew, that's sharp. Bladesmiths, welcome to the kill test. Ram Dao, Ram Carcass. Josh, you're up first, you ready for this? Well, let's kill it again. Josh, let's talk about your Ram Dao here. The blade you have here is sharp. For every pass it makes, it cuts deeply. But I also love what you have here in sense of balance, that even though it's a chopper, the recovery is just comfortable enough to where you can cut all the way through. It feels good in the hand, it's got a great balance, and most importantly, it will kill. That's good awesome, job. thank you. All right, Ben, it's your turn. You ready for this? I'm excited, let's do it. Something's off about this design. It's part of the perimeter, it's part of the design. I don't know what's going on. Ben, your blade doesn't have a finial bowl. It's one of the defining characteristics of the Ram Dow. It was also one of the parameters. And the judges feel that your blade cannot be tested evenly and fairly with Josh's. Please leave the forge. Josh, congratulations. You're the Forest and Fire champion, and that's a title that comes with a check for $10,000. Come on forward and shake our hands, brother. I cannot believe this is happening. I think what I'm gonna do with the $10,000 is gonna go to open a shop where I'm gonna be providing workshops for at-risk youth. Tori Hanzo, a thousand layer katana. Whoa. Born in 16th century Japan, Hattori Hanzo, also known as Devil Hanzo, was perhaps the most legendary samurai to ever live. Almost 400 years later, in the 2003 Tarantino cult classic Kill Bill, Hattori Hanzo is reimagined as the modern day bladesmith who creates a katana so fine it would cut God. In reality, the katana is the majestic symbol of the ancient warrior samurai, featuring a simple but elegant single-edged blade designed for precise cuts and lightning-fast thrusts. 
the dazzling Damascus layering produces not only a beautiful piece of steel, but an incredibly sharp and deadly cutting edge. Good luck, bladesmiths. We'll see you in five days. Let's do this, man. All right. My name is Mike Divert. I am a journeyman bladesmith and an elementary school teacher. I teach Spanish and reading. There's a lot of love I pour into it, but that two months in the summertime, uh, bladesmithing is a really good therapy. Grinding with a grinder. I am truly blessed to have a press and a power hammer by hand. This is very difficult. The blade has a slight warp in it, but it's something that can be ground out. So I'm really happy right now. I have my blade ready. Now I just need to start making all the handle parts. This handle has to be tight. The sword is going to be beat up. So now it's going to be wrapped in stingray skin and ito cord. I'm pretty happy with it. My name's Tristan Wynn. I'm 19. On a typical day in Tristan land, I work in a pizza shop, and I'm studying to be a chef. I kind of pull my inspiration from everything around me. If I see something in a video game that I really like, I'll try to make it in real life. I'm going to start by working on my 1,000 layer Damascus. Whew. If I had power tools, I feel like I could have pumped this out a lot faster. It's taking forever. In order to get the weight that I need to be able to get the sword to length, I forge welded mild steel to the back and the sides of it. I think it'll make the blade stronger. I'm doing the heat treat on my katana with charcoal, and I'm pretty nervous. This is the make or break moment. If anything goes wrong, I won't be able to finish this piece. Straight. Woo! My biggest deviation from the tradition is I'm using shoelaces for my wrap. It just feels the nicest, but they're shoelaces. Yeah, everything feels really together. Let's go hit things. Bladesmiths, a Hanzo's katana's first duty is to kill. To find out what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do, I will take your katana and deliver killing blows on this ballistics dummy. All right, Mike, you're up first. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Let's do this. Mike, your edge is razor sharp. But more importantly, there's bone on your edge, but your edge did not roll, did not chip, and your blade stayed true. Overall, sir, your blade will kill. Thank you. Tristan, you ready? Yes, sir. Let's do this. All right, Tristan, the balance of your blade is very good. It's light, it's fast, it's easily maneuverable. But when steel meets the skull, there were some problems. Your blade took a serious bend. Also, on the edge right here, you took some chipping. But overall, looking at the dummy, I think your weapon will definitely kill. Thank you. Gentlemen, the second duty of a Hanzo Katana is that it is to be sharp. It is said that a Hanzo Katana is as sharp as a thousand razor blades. Now, a sharp blade should cut cleanly through the tatami mats. A dull blade will crush, bend, or get hung up. A dull blade is not a Hanzo Katana. Mike, you're up first. You ready for this? Yes, I'm ready.
Your blade, sir, is sharp. It cut cleanly through the thickest of our tatami mats. But on the backhand slice, it did not cut completely, though. Overall, sir, your sword will cut. Thank you. Tristan, your turn. You ready? Ready as I'll ever be, sir. Well, Tristan, your edge is sharp. It can cut through the tummy mats. My concern is the strength of your blade. It picked up another bend. Now you have two bends on your blade, especially right here, close to the guard. Tristan, this Hollywood competition has been exciting and dramatic. You've been at the epicenter of all of that drama. Nobody is questioning the strength of your character. However, the strength of your blade is such that we can no longer continue to test it. For that reason, I have to ask you to please leave the forge. Mike, you are an unstoppable force in this competition, and your Hatari Hanzo Thousand Layer Katana is absolutely deadly, earning you the title of Forged and Fire Champion and a check for 10 grand. Good job, brother. I am Forged and Fire Champion, and it feels awesome. Blackbeard's infamous cutlass. Among the most notorious pirates of the 18th century, Blackbeard terrorized Caribbean and Atlantic merchant shipping with his trademark cutlass in hand. Its short but thick curved blade featured a razor sharp edge that was ideal for hacking and slashing during close quarters combat while seizing small vessels. In his legendary battle with Captain Robert Maynard in 1718, Blackbeard's cutlass broke Maynard's sword in half with a single blow. Today, Blackbeard's menacing presence and expert swordsmanship can still be seen in the video game Assassin's Creed IV Black Flag. Good luck. We'll see you in five days. My name's Seth Marshall. Forging is an escape to where I can feel accomplished in something that I've done. I like my knives like I like my eyebrow, thick and in one piece. I'm gonna make sure the handles aren't too big, but they're not too small because there will be multiple operators. It's a lot of steel to be putting on a handle. Yeah. I want to do a robust edge on it. I want to keep it thick so it doesn't get broke up so easily. I like it. My sword is all together. It's all one piece now. It's a cutlass. It's Blackbeard's cutlass. Heavy-ish. My name is Jason Crum. At night, I'm a bladesmith. But during the day, I host a morning radio show. When I meet people, they go, hey, talk in your radio voice. And this is it. This is me. But they want me to say something like, hey, hey, guys and gals, kids, kids, welcome to the show. I have no press, no power hammers. Uh, my power hammer is, look at that, huh? That this is the problem. You get an arm like that and one like that. The plan is to take it one piece at a time and forge it as if I was forging a jigsaw puzzle. Even though it's going to be cheesy and campy, I'm making the clamshell guard look like clamshells. Putting the jigsaw puzzle of my handle together went really well. They put a little skull face on the back there. I'm going to leave the edge geometry just a little beefier, just so it can stand up to some of the brutal chopping that it's probably going to see. Ye stole me pirate booty, and now you're paying the price. It will kill. Bladesmiths. To test the lethality of your cutlass, I'm going to inflict lethal wounds on these ballistic dummies. Jason, you're up first. You ready? I sure hope so, Doug. Let's do this. All right, Jason, you got a very big handle here. But at least it's got the swells, it's got an indexing to where I hold on to it, I can tell where the edge is. 
The weight that you have in this weapon is so light and sense that I can wield it even around here. You've got the clavicle into the ribs, all the way through the lungs, and definitely it will kill. All I ever wanted to hear. You made my day. Seth, you're up next. You ready? Let's get some. Seth, your sword is forward heavy without a balance coming back. I don't know whose shoulder is going to hurt more. The dummies are mine, but your weapon, sir, will kill. Thank you. Test the strength and durability of your swords. I'll be chopping through these bones and then attacking that peg leg. Now remember, this test is not about what your blades do to these targets. It's about what these targets do to your blades. Jason, you're up. Are you ready? Balance of your weapon is really nice, which is surprising because you've made a two-handed cutlass. Your blade held up very well, except for the one little chip. And it's not even a chip, it's a roll. So it didn't blow out. It's a good job. Thank you, Dave. All right, Seth, are you ready? Yes, sir. Seth, first up, this thing's a beast. It is probably a pound heavier than your competitor's sword. Your blade, I mean, I can run my finger nail down this. I can see a couple of glinting spots, but it really didn't take any damage. All right, bladesmiths, let's find out if there's any edge left. This is the rope cut and pirate sail slash. To test the edge of your cutlass, I will cut this rope, which will raise the sail, and then I will slash the sail. This is all about what your sword will do to the sail and rope. Jason, you up first. Ready? Yes, sir. Jason, your edge cut through the rope easily and cuts with every part that the edge met on this pirate sail. Overall, sir, your sword will cut. Awesome. Seth, how are you feeling? Feeling good. Let's go. Let's do this. All right, Seth, what are the chances you find a very dull spot on the first cut on the rope? But on the second cut, it found another spot that was sharp. But on the sail, working a heavy sword like this affects my cuts. Jason, Seth, the judges have tested your weapons and they've made a final decision. Our new Forged and Fire champion is... Jason. Congratulations, you're the new Forge and Fire champion. Seth, unfortunately, your blade did not make the cut. Please surrender your blade. 
Jason, congratulations. You are our new Forge and Fire champion, and that's a title that comes with a bundle of bullion that's worth 10 grand. How are you feeling right now? <laughs> Come on, that, that's incredible. Forge and Fire champion! The Celtic Anthropomorphic Sword. The Celtic Anthropomorphic Sword is an Iron Age weapon that's both elegant and lethal. It boasts a distinctive hilt displaying anthropomorphic, meaning human-like features, often cast from bronze. A fearsome killer that the sword's strong double-edged point can be used as a deadly thruster, as well as a swift slasher, capable of quick attacks in close quarters combat. A classic of Iron Age Celtic weaponry, the sword battles on in popular culture, including the 2011 historical drama, The Eagle. Good luck, bladesmiths. We'll see you in five days. Good luck. Good luck, sir. Yep. My name's Bill Benke. I'm from Kingsley, Michigan. I'm 71 years old. I've been forging for about 40 years now. I've watched the show quite a bit, and I thought, I could do that. So this is my test. <laughs> Time will tell. The first thing I got to do today is get my steel cut for the Damascus. I want to try for a high layer count, something that makes the steel look shimmering in the light. That's a big billet. I need to get the casting stuff. The only thing I can think of is making like a cookie pattern. Success. I put an African blackwood handle onto it, so I hope it kind of matches the darkness that's in the Damascus. I know it'll cut. I got two band-aids to prove it right here. <laughs> My name's Chuck Fowler. I'm from Interlarkin, Florida. I'm 47 or 48 years old. I can't remember. Grew up in a bladesmithing shop. My father's been a bladesmith since I was a kid. I really want to do this competition to see if I can actually compete. And my wife and kids wanted me to do it. <laughs> I'm going to have to get each billet welded up and then incorporate both those billets together in order to get enough length and width to make the sword. So I grabbed a big chunk of 4041, got the blade completely forged. I've decided to cast directly onto my tang. I capture the details in the handle that I want to capture. It should look pretty cool. Yep, some of the casting was lost. I don't know what happened. I've got to cast this bronze handle one more time. I am going to try it vertical this time. I'm going to finish filling this up tamp it down. If it don't work this time, that's it. In theory, I could actually bury the handle deep enough to where the molten bronze would go down and have nowhere to escape and go around the tang. I just don't have enough time to cast another bronze handle. Wasn't enough. Looks like shit. I'm over it. All this work for nothing. My second attempt at casting is a bust. I'm done. I am done. I No more. Or I'm ready to just quit. I'm not going to complete the sword at all. But then I got to think about Bill. It wouldn't be fair to him. So I continue on. I want to get a completed sword up there, so I'm just going to do it my way, make it look as good as I can. I had a lot of issues these past five days. I pushed through, and I'm glad I got it done. This is the kill test. To see what kind of lethal damage your sword will do, I will take your weapon and deliver killing blows on this ram carcass. Bill, ready for the kill? Yes, I am. Right, Bill, let's talk about your blade right here. First up, your handle feels good. It's got a nice shape to it that just fits nicely. I like the guard. I like the bronze that you have right there. I can immediately tell where the edge is. This is what I don't like about your blade. It doesn't allow me to have fun. Two hits, it's done. This is really light, fast, and sharp. Bill, it will kill. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Chuck, it's your turn. You ready? Yes, sir. Let's do this. I'm feeling a little anxious. What are you thinking right now? Oof, that's a lot of weight, man. Chuck, Doug's taking a look at your sword. It's just too heavy to wield safely. The parameter specifically called for a sword that was light enough to wield one-handed. Because your blade failed to meet 
parameters. I have to ask you to please leave the forge. Well, Bill, you are now our new Forge and Fire champion. It's a title that comes with a check for $10,000. Thanks, thanks very much. I'm the Forge and Fire champion. Woo! <laughs> The Glaive Gizong. What? Oh. <laughs> Commonly seen on battlefields during the medieval era, the Glaive Gizong was one of the principal weapons for European foot soldiers in combat. This fearsome polearm evolved from the Celtic and German custom of attaching swords or edged weapons to the end of long wooden poles. The combination of the long convex blade mounted to a wooden shaft was ideal for combating enemies on horseback due to its reach and versatility. The Glaive Gisom had a signature hook or spike on the opposite side of the blade to catch riders and move enemy pikes. Cheap to produce and deadly against cavalry, the Glaive Gisom was essential on the battlefield for hundreds of years until it was phased out in the 18th century. Good luck, bladesmiths. You're going to need it. We'll see you in five days. You're in. <laughs> My name is Alex Eisenberg. I'm 29 years old. I own a tattoo shop and am a full-time tattoo artist as well as bladesmith. Most of my tattoos are a representation of something that's happened to me, and the rest of them are just stuff that I thought was cool and I liked, and I said, I want that one. The steel I've chosen to make the socket out of is just a, a regular mild steel pipe. My uh, weapon is too long for either oven, and I want to make sure I get a good heat treat. So we are running dueling ovens. There we go. All right, good. Preparing the wood to be inserted into the socket, I've left it pretty snug, so it's gonna be a hammer fit. I've completed my weapon, and I feel great about it. I put my best forward, and I left it all out there. I'm excited to see what it does, and, and I think it'll do well. My name is Nick Santella. I am 39 years old, and I am a geologist. I would say that being a geologist, I do have a little extra insight in the materials. Not that I have a very technical approach to blacksmithing. I'm more uh, pound away and see what happens. My shop is a pretty traditional setup. Oh, I'm still not quite getting the kind of heat I'd like. I need a bigger blower, and the biggest blower that I've got is a shock vacuum. Well, this is exactly what they always tell you not to do, so. That's what I'm talking about. But it's not taking a whole lot of time for me to wear out. It'd be easier with a uh, big burly man to strike for me. I'm gonna call that good. I know it's a critical parameter to make sure that the head doesn't come loose, but I'm getting pretty impatient. I think that's good enough. I would definitely do it different and better if I were to do it again. But, you know, for here and now, I'm pretty happy with it. Well, it prunes. To see what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do, I'll take your glaive gizam and deliver thrusts and slashes on this deer carcass. Nick, you're up first. You ready? Guess so. Let's do this. First up, right here on your edge, it picked up a chip. On another side of this, you can feel where the edge also rolled. But this weapon is sharp. On the initial thrust, it's got a geometry right there that penetrated deep into the carcass, your edge right here. On slashing, it lacerated easily on the side of this deer carcass. On the third cut, the weight of this weapon is so balanced that it's easy to lacerate all the way through. Your weapon will kill. Thank you. All right, Alex, your turn. All right, Alex, your tip is sharp enough to lacerate all the way through. On the slash of this edge, it's lacerated easily on the side rib of this particular carcass. On the wide swing, 
It did break half of the spine off. It is, as you can see, a little bit on the wider side. And with a heavy weapon like this, a wide handle can make it hard to control. Yeah. But the most important thing, it will kill. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, it's time for the strength test, the pike chop. That was intense. I wasn't ready for that. Often in pike warfare, the glaives or weapons like them are used as a secondary line of defense to push the pike up out of the way and or to chop at the pike shaft. So to test the strength and durability of your weapons, including the hook on the back, I'll be pushing these pikes up into position, then chopping at them with the blades. All right, Nick, you're up first. Are you ready? Yes, sir. All right, so Nick, it doesn't look like your weapon took any more damage to the edge. The weight of your blade is very nicely balanced. It's a good design, definitely a strong blade. Nicely done. Thank you. Alex, you ready? Yes, sir. Don't break it. Be nice. That's brutal, dude. <laughs> First off, your blade did take some damage here. They're very small chips and rolls. Your flanges here are just wide enough that when I pushed forward, I managed to grab two rows of pikes and push them back at the same time. Balance is nice on it. The shaft is pretty wide. It's not too big, but it's right on the outside edge of what's comfortable for my hand. But everything held up, everything's solid. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, now it's time for the sharpness test. To test the sharpness of your blade, I'll be cutting these ropes. Now, that releases the bag, and then I'll be cutting the bag. Now, unlike the strength test, this is all about what your weapons do to these targets. Nick, you're up first. Are you ready? Nick. Well, Nick cut through the bags really cleanly, and what I really like is the balance of this weapon. It's very easy to maneuver. I didn't have to fight the weapon. Nicely done. Thank you. All right, Alex, you're up. You ready? Yes, sir. All right, your blade is wicked sharp. Yeah. This passed right through the rope with very little resistance at all, and, and it cut the bags beautifully. The balance of your blade is a little bit more to the tip. Mm -hmm. So the one thing about this blade when I cut with it is slowing it down after the cut. But uh, it's a beautiful cutter. Did a great job. Thank you. Nice done. Nick, Alex, you've both done an incredible amount of work on your finale weapons. However, there can only be one Forged and Fire champion, and that champion is... Nick. Congratulations. You are our next Forge and Fire champion. Alex, please surrender your blade. Nick, congratulations. You are our new Forge and Fire champion, and that's a title that comes with a check for 10 grand. Good job. I got to make some really cool stuff, meet some really cool people, and being champion, that's just a really cool bonus. 